So today is part three of this little sermon series, Getting Off the Roller Coaster, How to Maintain a Steady and Joy-Filled Faith in an Up and Down World, which we certainly have. I hope that this has been a helpful series for you. We've talked about a couple of things that can help you get off the roller coaster and, and get back on track with your faith. We started off a couple weeks ago talking about how critical rest is physical and spiritual rest. Pastor Heju has been resting, I hope, throughout these couple of weeks of her, her Sabbath time. And last week, we talked about the importance of Christian fellowship, even in the midst of this pandemic. Christian fellowship is needed for loving support, for accountability, and for a challenge to grow. This morning's service, this morning's sermon, is on sacrificial service. You may have figured that out already. Jesus called it loving others so much that you gave your life for them. That's what he did for us. And it's a vital part of our Christian life and our witness. Serving others is helpful to them, but it also helps us, often more than we know. Serving others in love is so significant for helping us to get off this spiritual roller coaster, an emotional roller coaster, that it can't be accomplished without it. So let's listen to the scriptures this morning. Let them resonate deep within your spirit. The word of God for the people of God. John chapter 3, verse 16. If you know this one, go ahead and say it along with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. From Galatians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, Paul writes to the church at Galatia, You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. And from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 13, Jesus is speaking to his followers, and he says this, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And finally, from the, the epistle of John, the first letter, chapter 3, verse 16, we know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. Ordinarily, as I preach, I, I like to include those scriptures into the, the, the body of the sermon, but today I wanted you really to feel the impact of those scriptures. Now, most of you probably have, have found those familiar. You've, you've heard them before. We've heard a lot of times that charge in the church to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you've been in the church for any time at all, you know that Jesus, God's son, died for you. One of the foundations of our Christian faith. But what I found is that often the most familiar things can lose their meaning for us. You know that old adage, familiarity breeds contempt? Well, I think it might be more accurate if it was familiarity breeds apathy. When we're around something all the time, it loses the mystery and the wonder, and we lose interest. We just quietly and slowly start to take things and people for granted. <laughs> I heard a radio commercial, and I'm not sure I'll be able to, to 
bring it exactly as I heard it, but it went something like this. There's a lot of restaurant noise in the background, you know, dishes clanging and, and people talking, and, and the, the hostess, the restaurant hostess calls out over everything, over all this stuff, Nelson, party of six. Nelson, party of six. Oh, there you are. Let me take you to your table. And then the announcer comes on and says something like, those were the good old days, weren't they? Just one of the many things that in this pandemic shutdown we miss because we took for granted. But on a far more serious note about taking things for granted, ask anyone who's lost someone who's dear to them. And so often they'll remark, I just didn't know how much he, she meant to me until she was gone, until he was gone. We take things and people for granted. That happens with a lot of things that have always been around there, just like these powerful scriptures. We get so bound up in the ordinariness of the daily grind that we miss the wonder of this life and all of its gifts, kind of like a, a root-bound plant. Gardeners know what I'm talking about. If, you, if you've left a, a, pot, a plant in a pot for a long time, the roots just grow around and around and around it. And, and when you go to transplant it, it, it dies because it's lost its ability to reach out and find nutrients, seek water. That's kind of like what it is for, for those of us who've become, shall we say, church bound. Sometimes we, we get so wrapped up in doing the work of the church. We, we serve on committees and, and we make sure that, that we give financially. And all those things are, are good. It's just that we no longer hear we no longer feel the power and the challenge of those old stories of Jesus. It's, no, it's not exciting anymore. It's not fresh or, or renewing to us. And as a consequence, we never reach out personally with the wonder, the remarkableness, the amazing gospel of Jesus. It becomes for us church-bound folks not exactly stale, but just too familiar, maybe a little boring. And when we read scriptures like we heard this morning, we've read those before. We've heard those before, but we don't really hear it. We fail to catch the audacity of it, the shocking challenge of it, the overwhelming grace of it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, only begotten son, that whoever believes in him, whoever, any one of us, will not perish but have eternal life. <laughs> who would do that? Who would give their child? Who would sacrifice so deeply? And that eternal life part? Oh, my goodness. Now, that's a phrase we hear tossed around a lot, but have you ever thought about it? Eternal Life? And then there's this in, in those scriptures we read. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. <laughs> this is so out there, this call to lay down our lives for, for somebody else. Especially in this world that, that we live in, we are just consumed with our own needs, our own wants, the satisfaction of our own desires. We're so full of ourselves. We're so in love with ourselves that this call to lay down our lives, to even suggest that we would die or live, because laying down our lives means both of those things, that we would even lay down our lives for someone other than ourselves. What's well, crazy? <laughs> Who on earth would sacrifice that. You know, these ridiculously, radical, audaciously gracious scriptures, they should have us dancing in the aisles if we were here. <laughs> in your living room, I guess. But we are kind of church bound, aren't we? We are stuck in this idea of the church as an affiliation. It's a duty. We're here every Sunday or we're online. It, it's this group of friends that get together to, to sing and to eat or, or whatever it is that we do on Sunday that makes us feel good for the rest of the week. 
When we think of loving others as we love ourselves, all we think about is the pain and the hardship that's involved in sacrificing ourselves for others and laying down our lives. It's one giant ouch. <laughs> Yet, Scripture tells us, Jesus said these things to us so that his joy might be in us and that our joy might be complete. Being church-bound, you know what? It paralyzes us in our mission. Our mission for all United Methodists is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It's what happens when we call people to Christ. The world is transformed. Paul tells the church at Galatia, they, they'd become kind of church-bound too, you know, fixated on the rules about doing church instead of being church. And he says, you, my brothers and sisters, you are called to be free, set free from religious rules and, and self-righteous requirements, set free by the blood sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we need to hear that again. We need to hear again of our freedom in Christ, the freedom to enjoy Christ, to relish his presence, to, to be part of his body, the church, to rejoice in our salvation, to, to ponder eternal life and, and be filled with joy. That kind of freedom, it does bring joy. It brings great joy. Paul tells us this freedom in Christ isn't, is not something to be squandered, you know, but to be spent liberally in sacrificial love and service. He writes in Galatians, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled, he writes, in keeping this one commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. So here's my question for you this morning. Do you love your neighbors as you love yourself? We're tempted to respond to that question the way, the way someone did a long time ago. It was one of the experts in, G, in Jewish law who asked Jesus that exact question, you know, who, who is my neighbor, he asked. He, he kind of understood the truth of what Jesus was telling him in this love your neighbor thing, but he balked at the actual doing of it. So, so yes, who's my neighbor? Trying to narrow the focus, trying to, to get out of that full-blown, grace-drenched love for everyone. And Jesus responded to that person with the story of the Good Samaritan. It's one of the most widely known uh, stories in the Bible. The Good Samaritan, that hated foreigner who at great personal cost sacrificed, sacrificially helped another in dire straits, despite prejudice, despite expense, despite inconvenience. Loving your neighbor is not always easy or convenient. It can be costly and time consuming. But when you're paralyzed in this aspect of your faith, you're missing something that is crucial and life-giving. You're missing out on one of the keys to getting off that roller coaster of doubt, even of depression and despair. In sharing our love and faith with others, in whatever form that might take, our own spirits are revitalized and re-energized and strengthened. In other words, when we share our faith through sacrificial love and service, we get off that roller coaster and back onto solid ground. Even more than that, the big ouch of sacrificial service, loving others as we love ourselves, actually becomes an ah, because it has such remarkable health benefits for us. No, really. Really, Dr. Stephen Post wrote a book called The Hidden Gifts of Helping, and in it he documents real and remarkable physical and mental health benefits from practicing helping others. Researcher Leslie Goldman writes that among some of those benefits are, listen to this, lower blood, blood pressure, improved pain management, increased lifespan, and greater happiness and satisfaction with life. I get Better Homes and Gardens magazine this month. 
These researchers were telling us this. People who do altruistic things like volunteer have less anxiety and stress, in part because these actions release oxytocin, a feel-good chemical that relaxes blood vessels. Goldman writes, when you read to the elderly walk a 5K for cancer, or even plunk a quarter in the Salvation Army kettle, the reward center in your brain, okay, in your brain, pumps out the mood elevating, elevating neurotransmitter, this is a quote, dopamine, creating what researchers call a helper's high. <laughs> Who'd have thought? Well, Jesus did, because 2,000 years ago, he said, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. As his disciples were to follow his example of sacrificial service, loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. You see, serving others in love is not only good for our physical and mental and spiritual health, it's what we were intended for. It's to be our way of life as the church, the body of Jesus Christ. Now, there are always plenty of opportunities here at, at home or church to serve in love, even during COVID-era restrictions. You know, maybe, though, it's time for you to try a new one, especially if you've been riding that faith-doubt roller coaster, you know, have been dealing with depression or despair in this COVID era, or, or have just been particularly feeling church-bound lately. And if you're thinking this conflicts with the rest principle that I talked to you about a couple Sundays ago, well, hold your horses because I'm going to get to that. So let's talk about some ways to serve in love. Get on the phone. Call somebody. Tell them how important they are to you and to Jesus. There's one. Get ready to support your church leadership. You're, they're starting in, you're starting into a new era of leadership, working hard to make this church a force in the community. You can help with that. Don't eat to Homer Helpers. I was thrilled to see that sign on the door when I came a couple weeks ago. Homer Helpers, you know, or some other local food pantries. They're helping people who are struggling to feed their families during these tough economic times. You can help. Here's another one. Get ready to support the next community dinner. Oh, this is the last day of February or of January. Thank goodness February's almost here. So next month, February, get ready to help that community dinner. There's lots of ways, safe ways, that you can help. Check with pastor about becoming part of a prayer group or, or, or start a prayer group or, or be part of a group that makes phone calls around the community. You don't know what your pastor does, but she connects with people in this community, and she could use your help. Okay, here's one that, that kind of uh, fits in my, my uh, wheelhouse. Are you a, a knitter or a seamstress or a crocheter? Go online and get patterns from Midwest, Mr. Midwest Mission Distribution Center, and you can sew school bags or quilts or, or knit cute little baby sweaters. You can do that and, and send them over to Springfield. Or you can crochet or knit hats and scarves for, and then let the school know that you have some extra things so that those kids who've already lost theirs and can't afford to buy more can have something. I like this one. Write a note from, to someone from church or the community who's really down. That means so much. Check on your older or younger neighbor. Ask if they need help with anything. Organize a group and go over to Midwest Distribution Center again. We just went there last week. I'm, I'm with the Monticello Church now. and We went there a couple weeks. There's some restrictions, but the need is greater than ever. How about this one? This is a really easy one. Give financially to the, the Champaign Homeless Shelters or, or to Fairhope Ministries over in Danville or to Project Heifer that helps around the world. The list goes on and on. And here's a big one. Pray. Don't tell me you can't do that. Now, I know that a lot of you are already involved in some form of sacrificial service. I know that. But I still want you to reflect it and consider extending that attitude a little further or maybe a little closer. Maybe for you, the best place for you to develop that lifelong attitude of, of sacrificial service is right at home with the people you live with, 
with the people you're irritated with, the people who've annoyed you for 11 months, the people you argue with and you still have to put up with until this thing, COVID thing is passed and, and we're beyond that. What kinds of humble, loving service could you do for them? Can you commit yourself to just one act of, of loving service for somebody in your home next week? I'm talking simple things, running the vacuum, picking up the toys, leaving a thank you note on somebody's pillow, taking out the trash without being asked, cleaning a toilet or running the dishwasher. You get the idea. You know, loving others in the name of Jesus, all without fanfare or recognition, being kind of being a, a secret service <laughs> agent. That's pretty corny, in your own family. Or how about doing that at work or at school or in your neighborhood? It doesn't have to be anything huge. Just a simple, humble, loving act can change somebody's world. Holding a door, sharing a snack, running an errand, taking a casserole, writing a thank you note, you know, telling somebody about the hope that you found in Jesus. These small acts of sacrificial service, you know, that, that's what they are. And that's not all that I'm calling you to today. They're, they're things to prime the pump of service in your, in your heart, to get you off the roller coaster of, of waving faith, to advance you down the spiritual road, and, and to bring you more joy. But most of all, to move you into a deeper commitment to Jesus Christ and to loving your neighbor in bigger and bolder ways. So what do you think? Now, I know that there are some of you who are probably feeling already pre feeling pretty overwhelmed. You know, with these suggestions are probably just uh, boggling your mind with everything else that you already have to do. But, but please don't be overwhelmed. Because I told you I'd come back to that part about not conflicting with the rest principle, right? Well, here are two helpful words. And I'm, I'm getting close to winding down here. Two helpful words that you can love others right where you are. Those words are while and instead. And they can help you to creatively reach out in service without feeling so stressed out or overwhelmed. So here's the first one, while. A couple of things. While you're making dinner for yourself or your family, double the recipe. Don't put that in the freezer the way they're telling you on Pinterest, but take it to somebody who knows that you know who needs a little extra love. Double that cookie recipe that you're already making and take a dozen or two to, to someone who's living by themselves because people who are living by themselves usually don't bake cookies. Here's another one. While you're watching that game show or drama, pick up your knitting, knitting needles or your, your crochet hook and make a baby sweater for that Midwest Distribution Center layette or that scarf for the homeless, WCIA, the, the news channel, calls them our neighbors without an address. Isn't that a good one? Our neighbors without an address. Here's an, another thing. While you're writing out the bills, send a check. Doesn't have to be a lot. Five, ten dollars can make a difference to, to Homer Churches United here or Empty Tomb in Champaign, two ministries that are helping people deal with financial crises. Another while, while you're already at Walmart, pick up some supplies to put in school kits or personal items to go in health kits that the Midwest Distribution Center sends around the world. While you're in the car, phone a friend and just listen. You get the idea. Think creatively around what you can already do while you're already doing what you have to do. <laughs> in order to extend the love and hope of Jesus into someone's life. And then there's the other word I told you about, instead. This is a little more sacrificial, shall we say. Instead of spending half an hour scrolling through Facebook, I know that hurts many people out there. Spend 15 minutes writing a note to someone who needs encouragement. Instead of ordering that thing on Amazon that you really don't need, Order some kids' socks and undies. Have them sent over to Fairhope Ministry in Danville because they'll keep some local kids' feet and bottom warm. Instead of reading the news endlessly and moaning about how awful our country's politics are, read the world news. Pray for the hungry, the desperate, the refugees, the war-ravaged. 
and then include a prayer of gratitude for all of your blessings. Instead, oh, this one's speaking to me, instead of playing yet another game on your phone, text someone you haven't talked to in a while, tell them you're thinking about them, praying for them, and then do it before you start the next game. (laughs) Think creatively about sacrificing yourself, dying to yourself, as Jesus said, so you can give life to others. Your loving action will speak volumes to ears that are hungry to hear hope in Christ. In just a couple of weeks, we're going to be entering the the season of Lent that starts with Ash Wednesday on, um, what did I say, February 17th. That's a season of of self-denial, of fasting, where we really do deny ourselves. And whenever I think of fasting and self-sacrifice, I cannot help but think of words that God spoke through the prophet Isaiah, and the the guys don't have this on a screen, um, but it's an insight into what God desires for us, of us. And here's what God says through Isaiah. Is not this the fast that I choose? To loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the loke, to let yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke. Did you hear it? What God desires most from us is not selfish denial, but sacrificial loving service to others that can and will change lives and renew our world. And here's the roller coaster secret. It changes and renews your life too. As we grow into a life of loving, sacrificial service so that it becomes a lifestyle and not just an exceptional act, then we will naturally move out into our community, secret agents of sacrificial service, and into a world that desperately needs to experience the love, the grace, and the joy of a life lived sacrificially for Christ. So my challenge for all of us this morning who are still riding that roller coaster of faith in this up and down world of ours to become a not so secret agent of love. Serving one another in sacrificial love, it is no big ouch. Instead, it is a key to getting off the roller coaster and enjoying a purposeful and joy-filled life. May it be so in all of our lives. Amen.